independently on project come again sorry uh, we will be able to uh, work independently on uh, any project work once we <laughs> placed so that much knowledge we uh, we yeah, have that's uh, the reason assignments we are going to give you as well as we will be going to split multiple teams inside your batch itself so okay. what we are trying to do that number of people will be joined right we are going to freeze the batch and it split into two to three teams and we will give some sample assignments and your team going to sync together and provide the outcomes to us so there are some learnings available everyone should complete that if nobody's complete we will be keep on track in the back end and we'll feed some inputs so doing okay. practice again again you'll get some more stuff i'm sure okay okay that's the plan okay yeah first we will be doing our assignments some projects the same we are going to provide you for the first level of appearances you are going to work with that right then you will get some idea what's going on after that based on new data set you are going to approach the same approach in different manner so you may okay. be stuck something in the beginning after that you will be get experience we will keep on track about it okay yeah yeah thank you thank you that's yeah. it for me. any other questions yeah hello sir this is uh, this uh like uh you said that there will be a sample project right so mm -hmm. will it be equivalent to real time industry project or you will just provide some small data small scale data set just to get an idea of uh, how the actual project look like actually the sample data set why we are taking as a tie data set actually why we are taking if we are going to run the job with a huge data set the time will take more time within a two hours we cannot show entire outcomes to you right so what we are trying to do we will be going to explain with the sample data set and complete in a certain time after that you are going to do the same data set in your environment what we have provided to you right there you are going to practice it first after that we will give you some data set huge size of data set that is also you are going to work together so that's a team work so there you are going to run some query and it will take more than one hour or half an hour so based on that you will be encounter some issues everything you are going to disclose with your team and i am in part of your team and this i'll give some inputs to you as well okay because if i am going to take the huge data set and i am going to run the job and all it will take long time within a timeline we cannot complete am i right yeah got it yeah but we will give you some sample data set for your reference practice we will keep on monitor about it. so here the concept how much inputs you are getting from us that's a very important thing Okay, any other question? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I have one more question. Yeah, please. So, what is the main difference between big data developer and data engineer? Are both are same? Big data, data engineer is a common. So, if we are going to work with the cloud related, right? AWS, AWS data engineer. Without any cloud, you are going to work as a common data engineer. That's it. So, big data engineer, no, some I, of the I'm places asking. that can, yeah. Big data developer and uh, data engineer. Difference. Both are same only. Both are same. Okay. Yeah, some of the places, the positions in uh, uh, MNC companies, right? They are providing some catchy names like big data engineers or data engineer, something like big data developer, something they will be provided. So there it will be a little modified. It's a kind of catchy name only, I'm sure. Okay. okay? Yeah, okay. thank you. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Uh, I have a question like uh, mm. um, uh, you mentioned three to four courses, right? Uh, Snowflake. Mm. Um, I mean, uh, I have a very less understanding of coding. Is this, uh, which one is better for me? Can you please? Guide? It's up to you. <laughs> we will cover the coding basics as well. And then only we will go into key inputs with you. Don't worry. From the scratch, we are going to start and give some inputs about the Python programming. After that, only the coding part we are going to start it. There you'll get some idea, and we are going to uh, run the code via our environment as well as the IDE platform as well. So once we have done the same sample assignments and we are going to do some practice, right? There you'll get some experience. The main thing you have to do some assignments yourself. Whatever mm -hmm. we will be provide. Additionally, you want to provide some inputs as an interest. Then that uh, all if you're done, that we can cover about it. You don't worry about programming. Okay. Okay. Yeah, uh, you mentioned three to four courses in your curriculum. Mm. Which one is better? I mean, it's up to your selection. Speaking of Asher, right? <laughs> because uh, you may be different experience, I and mean, you will get some different opinions from others. You will have, you, some colleagues will guide you something, right? So we will not be Asher. This is the better to you. 
okay and because uh, it's a co commonly we have offered based on your friend suggestions or you you will get some idea so we will not be disclosed with that and uh, interfere with that it's up to your selections okay i just i want to uh, i mean full stack developer having more coding skill are required snowflake mm. are, that's my question yeah more than 5 years if you are you definitely in corporate they are expecting multi skill right that's a common so if you are just a data engineer only the cloud platform you know you may be lost the other opportunity if somebody is looking for aws skills additions they will not be filtering your profile this is happening as a panelist i know so what do you need whether you have to go with aws azure snowflake or you are having a more than 8 years of experience you may be adopt with all other platforms all the cloud you have some touch up there are always expectations right okay so based I on that, of course you can based on the experience under the uh, uh, mnc companies they are expect something right so job description based we have to go with that okay yeah any other question yeah no. thank you any other question okay fine if no question we can start actual session today yeah you are able to see my screen right So today is the actual Hadoop introduction session. What is available? Hadoop. That all we are going to discuss it. So just tell me what is Hadoop. You have some idea, right? It should be an interactive session so you can raise all your questions whenever you have in your talk. Okay. Always your session, your system, your mic is in, uh, available. You can unmute and ask your questions. So what is Hadoop? What do you think about it? Some idea you have, right? Huh? Uh, distributed storage and the distributed process. Distributed? Storage. Okay. And the process. Process also distributed. Okay. Okay. And that? What else? Is this only one reason? Why Hadoop is famous, sir? Mm. The data crunch, uh, data would not be stored in that disk. Mm. Okay. And then? That means the physical hardware is uh, uh, not uh, bearable. Sorry, come again. The physical? Physical uh, hard disks. Hmm. Uh, we cannot uh, increase vertically, right? The hmm. data storage itself. For example, hmm. uh, in industry, up to uh, 4 TB disk, we can find out. But, but if the data is more than the 4 TB, we cannot hmm. uh, insert in single disk. Okay, scale up, you are saying. So yeah, it scaling. may help us huh. scale up process, okay? Yes. And then? Parallel processing. Mm, parallel processing. That is under uh, process, distributed process, storage mm. process. That will yeah. come under, right? Mm. And then? What else? What, open source. Mm. This is the main reason why it is famous. It's completely hard of us, open source. Okay, uh, what else? Support, uh, commodity hardware, sir. Mm, what is commodity hardware? Because somebody know, doesn't know about it, so that I just ask the question. Commodity hardware is general purpose uh, hardware. 
Yes, whatever we are using. Which right? we are laptops. using in uh, our laptops. Yeah, yeah partner exactly. computers. Our own systems and all is a kind of commodity hardware. It will support with that and we can just aggregate it as a distributed manner. Okay, what else? What else? Split into the block. Hmm? All data set is split into the block. All data set split into large, large data. Hmm. Split into the different blocks. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Okay, fine. So whatever you answer, everything is correct, but actually Hadoop is just an open source framework. That's it. Okay, this is the meaning for Hadoop. Just it's a tool. Like other tools is available, SyncSort and IBM related tools is available. A lot of tools is available. This is very, very famous due to this as an open source. And this open source tool is going to be react to all your operations, what you mentioned. And it will be adapted with four weeks. This is a common thing. Everybody is going to say about it. So four weeks is nothing but volume, velocity, okay. velocity, veracity, veracity, and then old uh, variety, variety, variety of data. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So this is a common thing. Variety spelling is data. R I E T. Okay. So what do you mentioned, right? So distributed storage that will come under to volume. Yes. Okay. Velocity, distributed process, parallel processing, whatever you mentioned, that I will come to velocity. And then, so scale up also part of your volume only because you can handle your data, large data set, everything via volume process. Maybe I just kind of split into separate like this. So. Like velocity. Parallel processing, distributed processing, everything we can consider here. And then, veracity, I will come to the later. And additional variety of data. Mm -hmm. So, uh, all types of data. Structure, unstructured, semi structured data. Yeah. Structure. Storage and data. Structure. Semi structured. Sure. Any data type that will come under to this three category. So everything can be handled via your other platform. You can store the data without any problem. That is also just possible. To handle large data set is that is a part of your volume. Okay. And then veracity. What do you mean by veracity? Veracity. What do you mean by that? It just processing your data, right? At the time you have to do some operations. So all the transformation operation, everything will come to veracity. It just, because your data will not be cleaned at all. You want to read the data with some tools and do some operation and you have to clean your data, then only you can use it efficiently. So such kind of data manage and the data cleaning operations, everything will be taken care of by your Hadoop framework supporting ecosystems. Okay, so all the ecosystem is going to be react based on your veracity only. Like Hadoop Spark, whatever you're going to discuss, right? That all is a part of veracity only. Because veracity, you can access your data very faster. That's it. Even MapReduce program can do, Spark and you can do. But you have to do some operations, right? That is a part of veracity. Data cleaning and all, everything will come under to veracity. So Hadoop is divided with this four weeks as a basic. Everyone will know about it much. 
So this is the way it just divided. Okay. And commodity hardware support is additional. As an open source, it will be supported with your local laptop. You can deploy with your more than one or two laptop and you can immediately use it as your Hadoop cluster. So such cluster distributions, no other ecosystem will not be, either no framework will not be provided. You must pay one server, there only you can deploy all of that. But in Hadoop, you can do in your own aspect. At the beginning, it was introduced and everybody they are trying to do with their own system. They are going to sync their software, how to framework sync together, and they will be created as a cluster and they will be implement that project POC system down. And also, it will be support for your cluster. So, if server based cluster, if you want to design, that is also be supported. There is one more advantage, and the Hadoop was famous at the beginning. And Hadoop 1x, 2x, and right now it was entered into the 3x level, 3.00 something was introduced. So some uh, improvements they have done based on each version, my agile version changes, as well as it will be adopted with the cloud nowadays. So whatever the framework we are going to use it, the same framework they will be created as a wrapper and they will be deployed into their environment. And then on top of that, they will be using their services. Because this is a layer framework, right? So they are going to use their some reference jobs, they will be going to develop it and they are going to use it. So in the backend Hadoop references always it should be enabled. All the ecosystem, whatever we will be going to discuss, that is the base of Hadoop only. By default, base framework is a Hadoop framework. You may be a wrapper with other environment, but it will be going to run in the backend. This is just general introductions. Now, we just go with in detail with the demons. How Hadoop is working. So Hadoop will be followed by demons only. So demons is nothing but the services. Inside you are seeing Hadoop is a common name, but in the Hadoop, in the backend, a lot of uh, services has a, uh, what can I say? Yeah, service of demons that they have designed. Based on that building, we take some responsibility and do some operation. So each daemon will be designed with a different, different algorithm. It will be following the back. So I will explain that demons one by one. So name no. Data no. Any question? No, no. Resource manager, node manager. Yeah. Okay. One next question they may be going to call us a job tracker. Not manager as a task tracker. Yeah. And container application monster. Blocks. Mm, what is like so? Input split. Block input split. FS image. FS images. Okay. Edit log. Edit logs. Okay. And then. A percentage edit log. Check pointing node. Mm, that will come to active uh, and second, passive. We can yeah. it will come under to second. Standby name node. It called it as standby name node, right? In mm, standby name node, somebody will be confused. Okay, I will cover all this three in same round of itself. Because somebody is confused with that. Second name node, or it will be called as a checkpoint name node. Okay, also second standby name or something is available that I will discuss while we are going to discuss about it. Okay, what else? Block report. Block report heartbeat. Hmm. What else? Heartbeat. 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 Hmm. What else? What else? 
high availability. These are uh, uh, these are come under uh, demons. Demons only name no. Until this known. is will be covered as a demons. Uh. Okay, after the these are also part of demon supports. The backend is going to be run for you. This is also kind of altern they have designed. Demand tasks, right? These are done by. Uh, it's not a task. This is the demons. Okay, all the demons will be discussed on this only. It's going to be react as a separate services. Each services internally we are going to use this for keywords. So what this is going to be do? That's we are going to discuss it. Maybe I will give you jargons. Okay. Zookeeper isn't all there, huh? Zookeeper. Zookeeper also one of the demon. A journal node, sir. Journal node. Journal node, standby node, everything. Okay, I will mention. Journal node, yeah. active node, something is available. Yeah. What else? Active or passive. Okay. And then replica. Replication. What else? What else? What else? Job history server. Hmm? Job history server. Come again. Why is he speaking? Job, Job history okay. server, he said. Development server. Job history server. Job history. Job history, okay. Okay. That is a part of yarn okay. because yarn only is ridiculous. Okay, no problem. Anything else? Yeah, okay, fine. So we'll we start and discuss about each of the events, what it is going to do, what is the responsibility it was taking. So name node is nothing, but actually this is going to be taken. We will go with some visual, some in Charts or things, then we will discuss this much. Okay, so in a single cluster, uh, any Hadoop cluster you're going to design, you must declare one node as a name node. So name node is nothing but it's a master node. All other node, what you are going to design, everything is going to be act as a slaves. So this slave nodes is called as a data nodes. So what is a node exactly? Hmm? What does it mean a node? Node means mission. No. Your single mission, your commodity hardware we are going to support, right? E example, you are going to connect with the forum laptop. Each laptop is called as a node here. Okay. okay, so you can create multiple node as uh, a multiple laptop. You can sync together via networking. You can communicate together and uh, share your data and access via processing engine and all. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this is Hadoop cluster entirely. It's everything is combined, right? This is called as a Hadoop cluster. I'll read first cluster. Okay. So what it is going to do? Whenever I'm trying to write some data to this Hadoop framework, first it is going to be a request into name node. Name node, what it is trying to do, example, I'm going to write my data as a 100 MB of data. I'm planning to write my file is ABC dot txt some files i am planning to push into hadoop platform while i'm pushing this data metadata sorry, name node is going to be take this metadata information like file name 
file size and how many blocks it's going to be divided. I will tell you what is block and the file type. What is and where the replications is going to be used. It and file name I mentioned right already. File type. Yeah. These many information can be hold into your name now. Like abc.txt, that is the file name. This file will be stored in and path. So Hadoop, some path is available. There only the data is going to be stored and one is present. Who is going to be access this data? This information. These are always called as a metadata. It doesn't store the data here. It just takes this metadata information about this data. This information only just keep on hold into your name node. That's it. Okay. So all metadata are going to be stored here. And once name node just confirm, then only your data is going to be stored into across your data node. This is only actually keep your data. ABC.txt file is going to be stored here. And the replication is going to be stored here. As well as here also third replication. So by default, three replication is available based on the data will be replicated here. All this information has to be stored into name node. Okay, so whenever the data you're going to read, metadata is going to be checked, sorry, name node going to check with the metadata where the data is processed. Based on the node only, your job is going to be start. So name node, keep on maintaining your metadata, that's it. Okay, any question this? Are multiple nodes just for a parallel processing purpose or is there any other purpose? Uh, multiple node is mainly used for distributed, distributed parallel processing only. So because same data you're going to replicate all the places, right? So the okay. backend is just going to be stored as a blocks only. I will tell you how the distribution is working in the back. I will show with you some example. Okay. Okay. Yeah, why so you need I to use... just store the entire data? Like, uh, let's say there is 100 MB. Yeah, we are storing the same data in uh, D or like data node one, data node two, and in three or third data node as well. Why don't we just split the data into like uh, 30 MB, 30 MB, or uh, 40 MB like that? Uh, that is internally, they will be split based on the blocks only. I just mentioned as 100 MB. If I suppose I'm going to mention 200 MB of data, then it will be split based on the block size. I will tell you how the data is going to be stored internally. This is just a basic reference of what name node is doing. Later, I will go with the internal. How okay. the data persists in each node, how we are going to read the data as well. Okay? Okay. Hmm. Any yeah. Any other question? Somebody is trying to ask. Yeah, I was going to ask, will there hmm. be unused data nodes for that master node? Like, can hmm. you define what data nodes will be used? Data node only actually your data is going to be stored. Name node just have a metadata information like abc.txt file, right? This is actually is going to be processed into data node only. This data information, metadata information, like the file name, file type, where this data is going to be stored, what are the data node hold this data? These many information only available in your name node. It doesn't store your actual data. Only metadata is available. It's kind of indexing. Whenever I'm going to call this file again from this environment, first it's just going to be checked with the name node. Name node will provide the index information. Based on that, immediately we are going to start our operation with the other data node. Okay, so that solution is just called as a master slave. He is like a monitor, a master, like a team leader, or manager, somebody. He just get the requirement based on that, he just assign the work to some other uh, subordinates. The same here as. as Okay. Yes. So data data is replicated on the three nodes or it is yeah. aggregated by the nodes. Yeah, it will be replicated in all three nodes. So with three X replication by default, we are going to plan it. So by default, Hadoop is going to be used. So based on the same data, it's going to be replicated other two nodes as well. If I am going then to when, use, yeah. yeah. Then name node can send the jobs to any node, right? Uh, it depends on the data size as well. Okay, I will do one thing. I just change the file size here. Okay. Because you maybe get some idea. So let's suppose this data is going to be stored with um, 200 MB. So inside it will be split into two blocks. Okay, so the block size is 128 MB. By default is available, it's just going to be split into two blocks. 
So I'm going to use with this three node or five node. Okay, four node plus I'm going to use it. This is one more node we can consider. Data node four. Okay, so ABC dot txt just going to be split into two blocks. So block one, block two. First block is over. So the first data is going to be stored into two machines. And this data is going to be stored into this place and this place. This block data is going to be stored into this place and this place. Same data will not be persisted again as a replication to same data node. It should be replicated to other data node. Like this, 3x replication, the data has to be moved somewhere. So already one node is data is available. Other two places, the data has replicated. Same like here as well. Actual data, if I'm going to call abc.txt file and read this data, what it is going to do, name node can monitor where this data loaded. So based on the two boxes information, all the details just fetch it. And it's just going to be a request into where which data node is available. Example, data node available, data node two available, data node three available. The three places you just noticed. And info to data node one, you can take this request like that. So based on the blocks, all the information, what are the block information is available here? Only one block available. Another block will be replicated to this places or this places because this data is replicated in this two only. So data node one going to take block one data. Data node two is going to be work with block two data. This two combined only, you will be getting 100, 200 MB of total data. Am I right? Are you able to follow me? Yeah, yeah, sir. I can. I am able to also, one more thing uh, regarding the block size, will it be same on the all the data nodes? Same block yeah, it's size. A, by default, 128 MB is a default block size. It's a default. Okay. If you want, you can change it via command. I will show you the command. We can change okay. the replication. We can change the block size information. Everything we can do it in command line. Yeah. Okay. Maybe I will show some examples. I just save it. Let me push some data. Okay. In front of you, we will see with the practical. Okay, so sample files say readme.txt. This file is available. Let me go to push it. Okay, this data is now is available in other platform. Don't think about the command later. We will be discuss again. Don't worry. Just for the references, I'm planning to show with the practical manner. Okay, data is stored inside. There's the data, and you can see there's a file, and the three replications just followed owner as well as the group. All the information I can get when this data has to be stored inside. This information is available. Let me go into check in. Seven zero. This is name node platform. So here I just designed the entire configuration capacity is just going to be taken with 1.23 TB uh, data sizes. Live actually just five node cluster I have designed. So each node, how much the memory is stored. So 25 GB, total cluster size is 25 GB and the 10 core sizes are assigned. So based on this data nodes is going to be live here. Okay, and each live node, uh, live data node, I can see each, uh, that information. So each of them capacity 250 GB I can store and it, you know, the use the sizes is this much, we can use it. And how much the utilization is going to be used. This information as a report we can get from here as well. Now I just go to the file where I just loaded. Okay, there's a file. So here I just reduced the block size to 16 MB for the practice purpose, but actual block size is 128 MB. So now this data of 568 bytes of data, I just stored with the 3X replication where this data is persisted right now. 
that information I want to get it from here. Am I right? This is actual data. I know very well this data stored here in this place. You can see data availability, this place has to be duplicated, block zero. Because there's a small size of data, if it is a more than uh, size of the block, you can see all the information much here in detail. I will go to the command. Okay, all the information I can collect from here. If I want to check with blocks. That's the block information. file information is available here. You can see there's the one block. Okay, this is the entire block information, replication three I just used. If I'm going to see this information in detail. The three nodes is holding the state. Okay, so three data nodes just holding this data. Eight, seven, ten. This is the data node numbers. This is just holding this block information. So, what is the number? Eight, seven, ten now. Eight was three started right here. Okay, one, two, three, four, fifth data node is down, I think. Okay, so anyway, this is the known number is available, okay, eight, seven, and 10. So which means data node three, data node two, and data node five, I think. These three data node holding your data as well. You can see this information. Okay, you are among able to them, compare it right now. Among them, one of, one of the node is the name node, right? Uh, how, why it will show here? No, name node is not showing here. Name yeah. node is a different. Uh, you said that uh, one node was down, right? No, it's a live here, node. Right? Live node is a different. Name node number is different, I'm sure. Oh. Okay. So it's not syncing here properly, I think. So I maybe check this one. There's a new images I'm creating it. That's oh, uh, directly I'm using. It. Oh, apart from name node, you have five nodes. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, can we practice big data in Jupyter Lab? Yeah, this Jupyter Lab will give you as a practice enrollment that you can do all your commands and all. Yeah, somebody asked the questions. Now you just understand, right? How node is working in the back end, how the data is going to be stored in the back end. This is metadata information, block information. These are just keep on by your name node based on the command. I have retrieved the data. Actual data is going to be processed inside to the data node, data node uh, one, three, and five. This play three data node only holding that particular data. Clear? Any question? Let's go. Like uh, blocks, yeah. So just one query. So how the name node connects with the machine? 
how it retrieves the information which jobs needs to be run or not. That all Yarn will take. The job maintenance, everything will be taken by your Yarn. So that uh, in Hadoop 1x, Nameload will take care from the Hadoop 2x version, separate cluster, uh, Yarn clusters available, that one will be taken care of the back. Each job, if I'm going to run it and deploy anything, separate cluster is going to be taken from the back. Okay. Holding metadata like blocks, path, replication details. Okay. So data not only actually store the data. Okay, so whenever the request comes, first the name not only receive, the name not going to be verify the data and then only data not going to be react to that. Okay. Yeah, that Jupyter lab, how we are going to use it, each of them I just create as a separate kernel. That all we'll discuss in detail while I'm going to explain about installation part. So uh, other time we will discuss more about it, don't worry. So each of them I just create as a separate kernel, like Hive kernel, Spark kernel, I just create it. So you can use as it is. I will tell you how to use the fix. Somebody asked a question, so that I just answer. Okay, so hope this two point, everyone is clear. Now I just go with secondary name mode. So secondary name mode is nothing but it just keep on maintain with your actual name node. Secondary name node is called checkpoint node. And another one thing is available that's called a standby name node. So secondary name node and standby name node, there is a slight differences. If you have a huge clusters, you are going to maintain it there only that secondary standby name node is going to help you. If it is a small cluster that you want to maintain your secondary name node maximum, that's it. Why we need to use this secondary name node? Some questions, somebody will have these questions because the entire metadata is going to be stored into your name node only. What is suppose the name node goes down or failed? Because if data is going to be failed, we have a replication factor. We can get the same data from other data node as well. But name node is completely goes down. We cannot get the data from somewhere. That's the reason we will be keep on monitor with secondary name node. This secondary name node is called as a uh, passive name node as well. Another name, checkpoint node or passive name node. We are going to call it. This is active name node. Whenever you are going to use that main master node is called as an active name node. This is a passive name node. So what is the use of secondary name node? Whenever name node is closed down, at the time only secondary name node will take the responsibility and follow with all your operations immediately. Because all the time your job will be getting a lot of queries, sorry, a lot of requests will be reached into the Hadoop cluster. Immediately you want to respond back to your uh, uh, enrollment. Otherwise, your job is going to be failed or you cannot continue your process with that. So business continuity process only, secondary name node will help you. Okay. So whenever name node goes down, it just gives some acknowledgement. Based on that only, secondary name node will take in the back. Otherwise, in the secondary name node will not touch anything with your name node actions. Only failure time. How this name, secondary name node take this responsibility immediately? That I will tell you. That is a depends with hard bit and this journal, this one, right? So standby name node operations that all will come here. I will tell you, FS image is a part of that. So that I will tell you in detail, just give me something. So just an assistant, rubber stamp like that. Whenever name node goes down, at the time only secondary name node will take the responsibility. If it's failed. Okay. So, third point before reaching to the resource manager, I will tell you what is yarn. Because based on the yarn only, resource manager and node manager is going to be reacted. Last time we discussed, right? So, how the Hadoop cluster is running. No? So, that if you want to submit anything as a job, like you want to monitor some request as a MapReduce program or Spark program, something that is going to be created as a jobs only. Okay, so this is already I said, this is the master. So all of the rest are uh, data nodes, I was like. 
So each of them have to start the process, right? Everything keep on monitored with your one node is called M. So if suppose I want to process this data, I'm the requester as a client, I'm going to request, however, one GB of data, I want to process it. This data already I stored at the xyuser.txt. This file I want to read and show how many records is available. This request will be reached into the name node first. Name node can understand where this file is available based on the block information, replication information, data node path. All the information available already file types and all. Based on that, name node can understand, okay, this data is available in your node somewhere. So we have to process this data. So how much I can provide the request? This is immediately will be transferred into yarn environment. In Hadoop 1x version, yarn is not available. Instead of yarn, job tracker is a kind of operation is available that will be taking care of all your operations. But Hadoop 2x versions, name node will get more burden so that they'll remove this operation from the job tracker and newly introduced as a yarn. Yarn full meaning is called yet another resource negotiator which means it just negotiate the resources for this cluster on each job based. Already I said this job is one GB of data. So Yarn can decide how much I can provide the resources. Maybe I will go with 10 GB. For example, I'm saying 10 GB of data I want to process. The process, the file size is 10 GB. File name is xyz.txt file. So this information Yarn will be collected first. And then what it is trying to do, just I'll realize how much resources are available. Just before I show you, I have 25 GB of space uh, RAM I have, as well as 10 courses available. So from this, it just recognize what is the requirement they will be provided. 10 GB, I want to process it. So I want to allocate 10 GB space memory, as well as from the 10 core, I can allocate four core. So this 10 GB and four core is going balanced 15 GB and six cores is available entire cluster. Such kind of balancing with your resource maintenance will be taken care by your yeah, that's it. Till now, any question? Yes, yeah, sir. Yes, so, so let's say we have four nodes and let's say three nodes are down. Still, mm -hmm. the job will run, right? Yeah. Or any minimum requirement should be. Even if we don't have this much memory, the job will run because it will be run in the back end with the block size based. Each of the block will be run in the back end and provide the output as a cache somewhere, then it will be processed. I will discuss separately about this processing layer. Okay. Yeah, there, but I'm asking about the unavailable node nodes. Let's say they are down. Uh, let's say three nodes are down. Hmm. Uh, it will run on the single node also, right? Because yeah, exactly. Yeah, they, that one node we have the resource information, right? Definitely it yeah. will take care and uh, it will be run in the back. End. But the process is a bit slow because you are yeah, not but, capable with that much memory because already yeah, that all will the be there. Is, yeah. Instead of 10 GB um, uh, resource allocation, it may be go with one or two GB. So it will take some time, but your job has to be continued. But that should contain all the data there itself, right? Uh, here you say they say entire three node is completely down. We have only four node, we cannot do any process. But in real time, you may be going to work with 10 node, 100 node cluster. There's somewhere the data has to be immediately. Yeah, located. somewhere has to be there. Yeah, there you can handle it. Okay. okay? Because somewhere the data node goes down or failed immediately, what are the data is going to be stored inside that will be replicated to other node. That all internal algorithm is available that will be taken care. Hey, anyhow, we are using the replication factor, right? Uh, three, three, four. Yes, yes, exactly. That's the reason. If particular data node one goes down, you may be losing the data, right? So that is will be avoided by our replication funding. Exactly. Yeah, this 10 GB or 2 GB of data is going to be stored as a four blocks or 16 blocks here. This node completely down. This 2 GB will be splitted and stored into other data now as a replicator. So the data always should be isolated and they keep on secure. Okay. What if suppose that the entire node is full? You have four node total or 100 node or 50 node, entire data node is full. What will happen at the time? This is also one of the reasons, right? You have total sizes, each of them you have uh, one TB. Example I'm saying, each data node you have sizes, one TB, one TB, one TB. So total four TB only. You have already the data hold with uh, uh, 1.5 TB, that's already folded with the three X replication, 4.5 TB just expanded. Entire data will be locked with your data node. 
At the time, if you are going to write any data into your data node, it will not allow you. From name node itself, it's just restricted. We don't have that much memory, so we cannot load the data. The job is going to be fake. The execution flow is completely done. So you have to add it again as a new data node. Wherever the replication is missed, that will be taken care of the first priority, replicate across the cluster, and then the new node can be allowed to load it. Okay. Uh, actually, I have small doubt. Uh, so instead of, I mean, it's a very rare case, right? I mean, all data nodes, uh, all data nodes going to be dead because so since 1.0, we have a speculative execution, right? So it will continuously check the health status of the data nodes, right? Yeah, utilizations, but uh, based on the utilizations model, it's just going to be respond back to your client. Each okay. time, node is going to be checking the utilization, how much data node is available, how much memory, how much um, data has just processed inside. All the information, it just collected node again again. Based on that, it just requests to your owner or uh, somebody, the data is almost filled 80%, 90% something. So you want to get aware and you want to add some uh, node immediately or you want to re release some data from that. Some old data is available, you have to occupy that as well. Such kind of activity, you want to take it out from your end and you want to release that. Otherwise, limit exit or memory exit, uh, uh, data exit, something you're getting some uh, exit uh, uh, command while you are going to write the data into Hadoop cluster. Okay, oh, oh. this has been like mm. fair load balancing kind of thing, right? Yeah, got it. Mm, yeah, you want to add a disk mode as well here. Yes. There's a kind of commission and decommission operation you have to do in the back end. Okay, okay, got it. Thank you. Yeah, that concept is called commissioning and decommissioning data nodes. Yeah, same thing is handled by load balancing in AWS, right? Oh, yeah. The low, cloud is the next part. This is the yeah, base, but from um, here only they have copied the concept and all. Yeah, yeah, got it. Mm. Okay, anything else? Uh, thank you. Yeah. Okay, fine. So now you have now a little bit of idea how the resource is working, the yarn manager. Where it is? Okay, so we come back here. So the yarn can allocate the resources. That's it. Based on the resources, this is, has to be created as a job. Job one, job two, something like it just created. This is will be taken care by your resource manager. Yarn just allocate the resources for each job based on the requirement and data sizes. Once it is assigned, resource manager create as a job number. Some application number has to be created based on that just going to be monitored. Inside the resource manager only, each of them will be going to process via, okay, let me clear this one. Okay, so, Okay, I just designed the 10GB of data. I'm going to process it. Yarn allocated already. So the application has to be created. Application number one, something. Inside, it's just going to be processed the data with data node one, data node three. For example, I'm saying. So each of the data node have their own manager that's called as a node manager. Each data node has it. Node manager one, node manager two, something is available. So application master, this application number, right? Resource manager. Is going to be monitored with the node manager only. Node manager one and the node manager three is going to be respond back to this operations. So node manager three and node manager one is going to be processed internally and provide the success flag. Once the success flag both of them will provide, then only resource manager can complete as a success. If any one of the node manager completely goes down or it will not be complete the process, then your job also will be failed. This kind of status you can get from your yarn size, yarn uh, environment applications. So that is, I just before showing you, we'll show some examples in real time. Okay, so right now I haven't done anything. I just going to start my PySpark cluster. And executor memory also two GP and each with and code. I just going to be mentioned two. I think it's a plural. 
Okay, so I assigned two GP memory and two executor code. Okay, you can see this one. The job application has to be designed and it is in running state now. So running state, you can see this information, the job has started and it just assigned this much memory. You don't think about that memory sizes and all, we will separately discuss this point. Just for the reference purpose, I just showing you in practical manner. So this is high design and you can see two GB memory I just assigned each and two cores. So for this one application, just assigned three cores entirely as well as six GB memory is assigned. Okay, internal subcalculations are available. Later, we will be discuss that in detail. Now, for the reference purpose, I'm just showing you. So, total out of the 25 GB, this job, this particular operation is created with take six GB memory and three cores. That information you can get from here. This is the application number. This application number keep on monitored by your resource manager. If I'm going to do some operations via here. Okay, example, I'm just roughly I'm doing this operations. Okay, some operation I have done, right? So inside, if you're going to check this information, you can get this detail, what is happening. Application attempt ID, something has to be designed, right? This application attempt ID only create as a task. This task will be taken care by your node manager one. So which means data node one is taking this operation and it will be running that particular query outputs. Okay, so now you can visualize the resource manager, Yan assign the memory based on our client requirement. Each of them two GB, which means six GB memory and the three cores has designed and provided. And then resource manager has created as application number based 001, some application number, the application number. This application number will be monitored by your resource manager. Inside the resource manager name, node manager has to be created as a separate attempt ID numbers or task ID has to be created in the backend. So this task ID will be taken uh, monitored by your node manager. You can see the node, which node is taking care of this operations. That information you can notice from here as well. Okay, now you got it right, this three. Yes, sir, I have a question. Uh, yeah, like while we are creating a task, or we mentioned two GB RAM and two cores, right? But mm. uh, on your ID showing uh, like three cores and six GB. Actually, the course is available, so it just immediately assigned. And in the back end, I just done some different configurations. So default is a one core only I have planned to create it. So that is one you'll be taking care of. Uh, we can override it in a different manner. OK? So if you want to go in detail, we have to go with the Spark UI. And there only I can explain that configuration information. So later, while we are going to discuss with the Spark session, right? I will go in detail about it. Don't worry. Yeah, okay. thank you. Yeah. Because we must check the configuration level, the Spark and Spark UA, how it is responded on that. It is crossing our topic today. So it may be confused to others as well, but definitely I will answer. And we will be going to play with different, different memory sizes as well in real time. That at that time I will explain you. Okay? okay. Any other question? And what we call that phase? Is it a Hadoop UI or what? There's a Yarn UI. Yarn yeah, UI, okay. Yeah. So in the back end, everything is running with the multi-node Docker container, right? There I can create it with the five node cluster. That is the size of the memory just showing you in front of. Okay? No. So resource manager, you know very well what is resource manager. It's just holding the new job information, known manager, maintaining task informations with respect to job numbers. Okay. 
Maybe I just can't be commented. Job application ID. An application ID. Mostly you can see in uh, application ID only. Yarn is nothing but just to allocate the resource. Getting the resource based on line request. So that is the use of yarn. So yarn will come to the first and the resource manager and node manager. Okay, this six points, everyone is clear, I think so. Okay, fine. Now we are just going to discuss about container and application master. So this is the part of your node manager only. Let me go on visual again. So already I said we have a three to four clusters available. I'll take it. Okay, so this is the main node I informed already, and this is the yarn is going to be run it. So here, this is the data node, right? This data node inside only node manager is going to be run. Inside the node manager, how it's going to be run it? I already checked with this resource manager, six GB memory, three core allocator. Right, so six GB memory is going to be created as a separate one in ROM, as a separate reserved space in memory, in RAM. That's called as a container. Inside the container only three core, three core processor is going to be run it. This is called as a applications. Application must. Okay, so I have to reserve it. 6 GB memory. Yeah. Satish, any question? Oh, uh, yeah. yeah please. So, will the 6 GB allocated to data node 1 only, right? Uh, if it is a 6 GB entirely allocated for data node 1, entirely will be allocated here. If it is uh, because just before we have seen you know, node manager 1 only, running. if it is yeah, a yeah, two, right. node manager 2 and node manager 4, four 1, 2, 3, 4. So, node manager 1 and 4 will be taking the responsibility and divider. Here one container will be created. Here one container will be created based on the memory sizes. So if it is a four plus two something, four GB memory here available, two GB memory container has to be created. Like that. Yeah. So at the time, what will happen? Here task one, here it should be a task. Okay, like the just device. Clear? Yes, sir, clear. So this memory allocation is called as a container. The core election is called as an application master, simple understood. So it's a kind of reserved space. It's just going to process your data because here only your block data is available. This data is moved into your container inside and process it and store into a staging area again. The processor will be taken care by this three core only maximum for this particular job. So some limitations with this three core you have designed based on your request. Yan can decide and will give you that information. So task one and task two, example, two tasks is available or only one task. This is complete and successful without any problem. It just is sent back the output to resource manager. Resource manager get the output and get the success flag based on the resource manager can confirm application completed as successfully. So if I can show you this one. Here you can see the status is running state. Once the job completed successfully, it just moved into success state. Okay, so based on we can confirm our jobs completed successfully uh, with the allocated resource. So based on the resource also, the time will take time. If you're going to allocate more resource, the job will complete faster. If it is a small, less resource, then it will take some time as well. Got it? Any question? Within the same node, there can be multiple containers. Hmm? Within the same node, there can be multiple containers. Uh, yeah, multiple jobs you are going to submit. I'm the client one, and uh, another one, client two, is going to be submit right at the time. Client one, 
client to a lot of requests will come right in the same time. So all will be created as a separate separate application ID. Application zero zero one zero 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 two something has to be designed. Here same node uh, data node can be in fact then you, it will be created here as well. So here so node manager easy. one node manager two. Here node manager one node manager three. Example I'm saying. At the time, data node one itself is just going to be processed to node. One for node manager one operations uh, with application ID, uh, application ID one, another one node manager for application ID two. It's just going to be processed. But resource has to be available in this data node. Otherwise, it will not be start the process because each of them is a machine. Each machine have limited resource, right? So based on that only, Yarn can design and allocate the process. Got it? Yeah. So which process will mm -hmm. come Which process will uh, take care of the replication? If process uh, will take care of the uh, replication. Yeah, based on the request only, right? Replication will be inside the data. Data node will be taken care. Here, one data okay. is stored. The replication is going to be moved to other node. That's it. This is relevant to process. Example: I am going to process my data, hundred GB data or 10 GB data. This time I can allocate the resource for 6 GB only because data load capable maximum 8 GB memory. So I can allocate up to 6 GB or 7 GB. I can allocate to name node manager one. So based on that, it just start the process. At the same time, another request will come from the client two and process some data. Data node one already completed 90% efficiency. So the yarn will not allocate the same task to data node one. The data will be replicated to some other data node, right? That the second job is going to be started. If resource is available, out of 8 GB, only 4 GB is used, 4 GB is free. At the time, same data node may be going to take both requests back together. Okay, like this one, you just decide. What if, suppose that data node is going to be different with other job, all other is rest, then your job will take more time. Correct? Yes. So based on the resource with each data node will be monitored by your YARN. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Any other question? Now you can correlate, right? What's happening inside to the other cluster. Okay, maybe I will go into the run one more job there. We can see some idea. This is already one job is running. If I want to see this information, what is going to be happen inside? There's a node. Okay, so total three container has to be created for this particular job. Node manager one and three as already assigned for this particular task. Node manager one, two core all allocated. Node manager three, one core allocated. This information I can get from here. Now suppose I'm going to create one more job. So this is already SpySpark running. I'm going to create one more PySpark. So high kernel, I'm going to use it. So create table, test, ID and teacher. Example I'm trying to do. Insert into a default test ID value one, two. Okay, two data I'm trying to insert inside. Now, process has started. Now, I just go to this environment. You can see application ID, new request has to be designed. Insert query has to be run via map this application type before it was park application. Two running at the same time. Okay, now it just complete. Because it's a small data, but for the reality, when the comparison purpose only I just created before. So based on the job is completed, and it will be taking the backend some operations as well. Now I'm going to read the data from here. Okay, I can see some data here. Like this, the job has to be designed, and a node has to be provide this information. The allocation has to be modified each of them. 
Got it? Till now, everyone is clear. All are in the same uh, page. Sir, I have a question. Uh, like, yeah, please. So you said that Yarn will manage the resources, right? Like mm. it will assign uh, memory and all. Mm. Based on, on the, the request. request. Yeah. What exactly request means? Or uh, is it loading the files or executing SQL queries? Anything. Any job is going to be run in the MapReduce program or Spark program, that is a request. You want to do some processing, right? That all is called as a request. Simple understanding. Okay. It's not about only MapReduce. You may be going to run with the test engine, Spark related operations, Spark application, you may be using it. Presto, you may be going to use it. The problem is the kind of particular separate uh, request has to be visited. What yeah. if suppose the resource is not available? At the time, the job will not be started. Just keep on waiting state or accepted state. Once the resource available, then only your job has going to be started. Got it? Yeah, got it. Yeah. Anything else? One question. Yeah, yeah please. Yeah. If the data is replicated on multiple nodes, right? Mm -hmm. And there is a right request um, for that data. So will that uh, transaction, whatever is updated or changed, will it be replicated across the other nodes as well in the real time or how does that work? Hadoop is mostly used for write once, read many. Once you write the data, you cannot replace the data or update the data. But it's possible with some property changes, we can do that, but it's not advisable as well. Because just imagine you have a data already, you just hold the data inside. Okay. So I'm not discussing uh, block, uh, what is it? Uh, blocks and all. So maybe first we will discuss that. Okay. Uh, here you can see this one. Example I'm saying, you're saying some data, right? So almost uh, 140 MB of data I'm taking out. This data already I have written here. Block one, 128 completely filled. Balance 12 MBR will be taken care of by block two. If you want to do some changes, this file, this file you can consider x, y, z, dot txt. This file you, are, you want to do some changes. This is going to be impact your blocks. So if you are going to delete some data or increase some data inside your file, what it will happen? This is going to be adjusted. If it is going to be adjusted, the block size has to be modified. If this block size has to be modified, it's just going to be reflect with your replications. Because if this data already replicate to some other data nodes. Data node two, data node four, somewhere the data has to be replicated. Entire node is going to be collapsed. There's a small size of data, 140 MB of data, you're trying to do some changes. So the only our impact with one or two blocks only. What if suppose you are going to do with 1,000, uh, 1.4 TB size of uh, data? Many blocks get impacted, your node get, will get more burden. Am I right? So that's the reason they will not suggesting to go with any update operation with the Hadoop platform. There are separate tools available. It's, it's going to be maintaining your data as a liquid format. There you can do that. But Hadoop file system will not be stored like that. Got it? Yeah. Okay, let me discuss with the blocks. Then we will go in detail because somebody will be confused with the blocks. So they will get some more idea. So container already discussed, application master is discussed. Container, memory allocations, we may be considered. I just provide as a keyword here. I don't like to uh, write anything like a query or scripting. I don't like to waste your time to be frank and saying. Application master. Process core allocation. Okay, so now blocks. Blocks is nothing but this is going to be store your data. Even your window system also, it will be key in the back end is going to be stored based on the block sizes only. But in window system, just following with 128 KB of data, in Hadoop cluster, they will be going to maintain with 128 MB. There's a default size. Why we are suggested to go with 128 MB here? Because in Hadoop, you are going to handle with huge data sizes only. So if you are going to create small, small file sizes, then it will create multiple blocks and the replication will get impact. So that's the reason they will be providing suggestible sizes of 128 MB blocks. 
in Hadoop, one X is a kind of 64 only. The SD first two X. 64, yeah, any question? Just then the... Jitendra, by the way, any question? No, sir. No, sir. Thank you. Okay, fine. So, how do 2x and 3x? They will be following with 128 MB blocks and 64 MB uh, for how do 1x version. After this, only just increased. So, whatever the data you're going to store, based on the block, only just divided and stored inside. For example, I said it's a 100, uh, 200 MB of file. If you're going to store, are 300 files. My file is 200 MB. MB file size is xyz dot txt. This file I am trying to store inside. So this data actually is going to be located to the data node one. First time I am saying here the data is going to be stored with the two blocks. So 128 as a block one. Another block is balance 72 MB, which is stored here. So the replication is going to be balanced with the data node three and data node four. This block data is going to be replicated to data node two and data node three because two three is replication data is replicated in somewhere. So the same data in data node two, what is going to happen? Only block two data is going to be stored. Seventy two MB of data is going to be stored into data node two, but data node three, it just stored both data. Block one already allocated from data node one, it just stored with one twenty eight. There is a block one. And suddenly some other data hold, keep on hold here. And then block three is just going to be hold the data. 72 MB. So block one and block three hold this data. Same data in data number one, block one, block two continues to adjust to. Something like each data will be splitted across your Hadoop uh, data node cluster. Some are just to. Whenever you require, you just call this data based on the request to client request. I want to read a XYZ uh, file. Uh, as a client, I may be request to the name node. Name node can have this all the information. So this data X, Y, Z will be split into two blocks, block one, block two. Block one will be hold into data node one, data node two, where it is, three, data node four. This metadata name node can hold. Like block two data will be stored by data node one, data node to data node three. This is all the information name node has available already. Immediately just point this node and run this code immediately. Like this, the operation is running in the vacuum. Got it? Any question? Sir, in the second one, there is 72 MB filter. Uh, what about the in the second uh, mm. second block seventy two MB is filled right? So will it Sec take one twenty eight MB or seventy two MB? No, actual size is one twenty eight MB, but you have only seventy two blocks, seventy two MB of data only. Yeah. So just hold this data balance. How much it is? Six fifty six MB balance space is available to store another data. Another data I am going to store with the ABC dot txt new data. This is almost uh, 100 MB, I'm saying. So, okay, 156 MB, maybe this okay. 128 plus 56, how much? Okay, 170 MB, I'm saying. So 128 will be allocated for one block completely. Balance 56 is adopted with this memory, then it will be used again. Because this is space available. Am I right? We're just going to be take the as a sequence plan. And at the space management, uh, it is automatic, right? That will be taken care by your data nodes. This is called as an intra-data node. Intra-data node. Data node or block scanner. Some concept is available. That will be taken care by each data node itself. How much memory we can store, how much data we have stored, what are the blocks available. That information is keep on holding. Mm -hmm. And there is concept like uh, table space. Hmm? There is no concept like uh, table space. There is no concept. It's table space. Disk space. Yeah, no table space. 
immutable. I'm not getting it. Uh, let me type in the chat. No, somebody can hear clearly. Just tell me. I'm asking for table table space. Table space. Table space. Table space is space. not like that. Not like that. In this concept, nothing is like a table space here. Okay. Its concept is called intradata node or block scanner. Uh, Hadoop 2x old version block scanner is the concept will be running and Hadoop 3x intradata node it just dynamically adjusted that block size information from that. how many block available how many we can fill it all the information based on the checksum operation is running in the back end that will be monitored it. okay yeah thank you mm. now i just going to be discussed with block report and come back with input speak so here you may be get some idea. So block report is nothing but each data node, what is the report, sorry, how many blocks will be assigned in the each node, or what kind of data has to be stored. That information is called as a block report. That block report will be keep on sent to your data name node from data node. Because based on that money, name node just get the acknowledgement, this data has to be stored into particular data node, something like. That. Example, I'm saying abc.txt, this data, first data node one will be providing the output. I have a abc.txt file block data. This data will be stored with block one number. What is block one and block two? This report will be sent to name node. Same like data node two. This is also abc.txt file is available. This file will be holding with. 72 MB of data only with this block two. 72 MB of data only I have. So based on that, name node can, can consider wherever the data is stored, whether the replication properly allocated or not. Based on this information only, name node can understand it. Okay. So block report is just provide about the block information or each block, what kind of data store, where the data is allocated. How much memory is sorry, how much space is just consumed? All this information will be sent to name node continuous as a report. That's it. And one more thing is called heartbeat. Heartbeat is nothing but whether this data node is active or not. That can be identified via some pulse. So heartbeat will be keep on sent from data node to name node continuously and just kind of acknowledgement. It won't send any report whether I'm active or not. It's kind of attendance reports. If it is active, it just sends some pulse to name node. Based on that, you know, heartbeat only name node can understand this data node active or failed. So immediately, if it is failed, immediately name node can decide. I didn't receive any heartbeat from this data node one. It may be failed. Immediately, all the requests will be transferred to data node two or four. Wherever the available node is available, it will be transferred all the requests to that particular data node. Okay, that is the use of heartbeat. Block report, heartbeat, both will come from data node. Block report actually block the data, sorry, data node is going to be send the data information to the name node. Block heartbeat is just acknowledgement pulse. Okay, those are the two things. Are we clear? So can we see that whether whether a data node is active or I mean uh, down on yarn or like yarn UI? Uh, that's how you are getting it based on some checksum, right? That checksum is called a heartbeat. So name node only can get that information and inform to yarn. Okay, yarn will display. Yeah. yeah. First, you just reach into the name node. The name node can confirm. Then only just inform to yarn. Okay. You can see through active nodes, active nodes. Dead nodes, right? In the name node UI. Yeah, that is the active name node only. No, uh, 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 what I'm saying is uh, we can see through that uh, name node UI whether the uh, data node is dead or alive. Yeah, live node information, right? There also yeah. you can see. A active nodes. Yeah. I will show you this one. Live node information we have noticed just before, right? So here you can get this information as well. Live node five, dead node means here it will come into the dead node platform. So based on that also we can understand. Okay. 
you can see name node journal nodes. So this is active node right now, which is running in the backend. For the second name node also, it's running in the backend with the daemon 50090, I think so. I have created different different containers, so everything is just for yeah. Second in name node also. This is another name is called checkpoint node. There is some checkpoint period is about 3600 seconds. Based on that, the checkpoint is going to be run in the backend. So name node 50070, second in name node 50090 information. So you can get some here. Okay, so now you're clear, right? Block report and block. block information <coughs> from data node to name node. Okay. Any question till now? Is name node, master node and uh, like parent node are same? Active node, all are same. Name node, master node, active node, everything is called as a same name only, a name node you can consider. Okay? okay. For second okay. name node, checkpoint node, journal node, you may be considered. Okay? Uh, so active node is nothing but it is active on providing the information to your actual other nodes as well. Passive node is nothing but once it is goes down, then only the passive node as a second node, no, name node is going to be act as a active node as well. This is promoted as a name if it is goes failed or down. Okay. Yeah, okay. So next input split. So in interview, they may be asked you this question, difference between blocks and input split. Blocks actually is a physical storage. Input split is a actually a logical storage type. If you are going to run any query, at the time, based on the input split only, mapper has to be designed. Map produce mapper or task, anything has to be designed based on that input split only. Why input split is famous? Because you may be store your data in a blocks, right? So this is a block. You may be store two blocks data, 128 MB, another 72 MB. So I have a two hundred MB of data xyz.txt, this file I'm going to process. 128 MB block one fully occupied and 72 balance will be occupied with block two. So in this case, if I'm going to process based on the block sizes, what it will happen? This is will be taken care by one core, one GB memory example I'm saying. This is what I get another one. This is also one core, one GB memory has to be allocated. So total this process, if I'm going to take two core, 2 GB memory, I need example. I'm saying, okay, this same case, if I'm going to approach with logical spaces based on the input spread, both will be considered as a single uh, node only, single block only. So, total 200 MB, everything will be combined as a only one block instead of two blocks. It's just combined with block one, comma, block two. So, here only one core assigned, one GB memory maximum will be assigned to process it. Like this, the sequence of data can be monitored and it will be combined and create as a single mapper only. So based on this input split only, input format has to be designed. Input format only, record reader or record writer. From this record reader and record writer, mapper has going to be designed. So number of inputs will equal to number of map. Okay, this number of map are only created based on the resource information. So that is the reason you the data is going to be sorry the input spread is main uh, mainly considered in your blocks information because you can data your data may be shuffled multiple places. Data node one you have a sequence data black one block two your two cores resources you may be going to lose it in data node three. The replication is going to be stored into block one, block five. It will not be a sequence manner. Somewhere it's going to be stored in different, different places. Here again, you want to resource it. So unwanted resources, you may be reduced based on this logical split. 
is okay in interview they may be asked what is the difference between block size and input speed block size followed by default block size as a physical storage basis 128 each of the block has to be designed and speeded input speed is a logical storage how the data will be stored and processed based on the sequences and it's just going to be allocated the mapper based on the mapper only resource has going to be run in the back end this is the answer you want to explain got it Any question, guys? This is very, very important. In interview, they may be asked these questions. Questions? Any doubts till now? Yeah, by default, the block size is 128 MB, or we can adjust as per our need. By default, 128 MB. If you want to increase, you can do that. As well as decrease, also you can do that. Via command, it's a manual override. You can do that. Okay. Okay. Yep. By default, it's a 128 MB. Any other question, guys? Okay, fine, then. Okay, this is logically driven. By mm, logically driven by mm, what kind of mode I can add? Resources. Resource applications. Okay, so number of inputs split equal to number of map. That's it. The, the interview you want to expect default size. There is no default size in input split. Physically stored, actual based on the default size 128 MB for each block. The logically stored. And the number of input split only equal to number of map. And that is the calculation you have to do it. Okay. Now I just come back to FS images and edit log. FS images is nothing but file system images and edit log. This two is majorly used for your second in a checkpoint node, a task in node, any places you can consider. Based on this FS images and edit log only, the second in name node is going to be act uh, promote as a name node what is happening inside suppose name node goes down completely you cannot maintain it anything with your name node something has happened some kind of fault has happened you cannot maintain with your name node immediately the secondary name node is, we need to take the in charge how it just transfer that all the metadata information so this is already name node and inside you have it is have a secondary name node all of the data nodes is already available. Okay, so I have a request continuously. I have a request as a client to this Hadoop cluster. Keep on working on it. Something happened with your node. Completely, this they know, name node goes down immediately. So at the time, the data right, each of the data is just going to be loaded into second name node as a your first image. Here, just persist the FS images inside to name node itself. This FS images can be read by your second name node and uh, read it properly. That is the reason it's just called as a passive node. Active node always keep on memory and they run it based on the indexing concept. All the requests have to be the same. So all the information keep on stored as a FS images. 
based on the FS images only, second in any node can add it to their information portal. And whenever the recent changes is happen, right, that is will be monitored by your edit log. Example, I am the request, so this is the time 8.40, 8, 10 p.m. I am requesting abc.txt file. I have to reload it first. This file says 100 MB. It will be considered. Name node at the time is in uh, live. What it is trying to do, just hold all the metadata. Name is file name is abc.txt. File type is file type is text to file format. File size is 100 MB and it just loaded two block information. Everything just keep on hold with your name node. And certain time, there is some checkpoint time interval I have, we have noticed in second in node portal. They are just going to be store this information as the FS images. Okay, keep on just loading this information, all the metadata information are stored as a FS images inside. Okay, this FS images going to be read from your second in node based on some checkpoint interval. So every 3600 seconds are we have noticed, right? 3600 seconds means six minutes of six minutes once FS images can be read by your secondary name node and keep on hold into their environment. So every six minutes, that what are the requests is just received. Yeah, it is one hour. 3600 seconds is one hour. Okay. Here over 60, 60 minutes, yeah, one hour, maybe 60 minutes. Are. So every one hour, the secondary yeah, name is okay. going to be read FS images and they keep on loading to their enrollment. Okay, so 8, 15, 8, 10 p.m. I just started. 9, 10 p.m. exam, or 9, 11 p.m. name would completely goes down. So whatever the changes, it's just going to be update on FS images, 9, 10 p.m. That changes, second in name node, keep on hold it. But within a one minute, 9, 11 p.m., it's just going to be do some changes, right? It won't store into FS images. That are all will be keep on maintain, maintained by your edit log. Recent changes, before update as a FS images, what are all is available, the recent changes. Example, abc.txt file, I may be going to change from abc.txt to xyz.txt. This changes I'm doing line 10, 50, 50 second. This changes I have done. Does this will not be updated as a FS images. Where this information keep on hold? This is stored as an edit log. Okay, so this edit log and the FS images can merge immediately and take as a responsibility as a primary node. Until it was a passive name node, once name node failure, immediately what are the changes that happen? All the FS images, everything has studied by your secondary name node and take the in charge as a primary name node or, a, or active name node. And you will be taking all the res responsibilities. So your job will not be failed anything. All your operation continuously maintained with your secondary name node immediately. This is the use of secondary name node. This is the use of edit log. This is the use of FS images. Secondary name node main activity is keep on maintaining that FS images, which is provided by your name node and merging with that FS images with the edit log while it is present as an active name node. Got it? Are you able to follow me? Yes. So you can understand what is the use of secondary name node now. Let me show some practical. Where this FS image is stored. You can see this images has to be created here. So this uh, size is 350 bytes and this size is 62 bytes of data because we have loaded very less data inside. So this is a small image size has to be created. This information is only checkpoint node, second in node, right? It's just going to be read based on the period 3,600 seconds once. Every 3,600 seconds once, it's just trying to read this many transaction at once. 
Okay, and this data is going to be stored into these places. CFS name node secondary somewhere is available. So separate daemon is running the back end that just keep on holding this information. Okay, only the recent changes has stored as a edit log. That edit log information has to be merged with your secondary name node and booted immediately here. Got it? Once this image has to be merged with the secondary name node, it just vanished from your actual past active name node and create as a new name node, new FS images again. Yeah, this is nothing but metadata, right? Yeah, FS image is a kind of metadata, but you cannot read the data actually. Okay. It is only read by your secondary name node. There is some algorithm MD5 has designed, right? That only can read this information. Maybe. Okay, if the images, you can see it won't uh, proper readable format. You can see there's a MD file. So it's not readable format, something is collapsed. This is can be read only with your second name. Okay. Now you understand, right? Why it is called as a checkpoint node, a secondary name node, or what else? A passive node. Whenever name node goes down, then only secondary name node have that responsibility. Otherwise, it's just waiting as a idle. Got it? Any question? Oh. Okay, fine. So FS images. Can you hear me? Oh. Yeah, yeah, tell me, climbs. Uh, sir, actually, this is uh, the cloud is installed or uh, is it Hadoop? Uh... No, this is my own uh, Docker container images. Okay, okay. So this is the same environment we'll give you. You have to practice uh -huh. your own environment, depends on your configuration. It just expand up to two to five node cluster. So you get you will give me a Docker image again. Yeah, Sorry. we will share yeah. you. Yeah. That you have to deploy in your environment. Yeah. In real time, also we use the same kind of UI and uh, Docker containers to perform Hadoop operations. Uh, real time data generating operations. At the time you have real time, you have multi node cluster. You are using as a single node, right? Right now, the single machine only are using it. We are trying okay. to deploy it as a multi-node practice because multi-node is actual reality. Otherwise, you cannot see this information much in standalone. Am I right? Okay. That's the reason we just split it into multi-containers in the back end and we'll give you. We just designed like that. If you want, we have a standalone node also, which box also available. It depends on your missions and your interest. Okay. We are trying to match with your actual reality. Then only you will get some practice and you will be confidently explained in your interviews. Am I right? Yeah, got it. Okay. So what else? No oh, file system images. Okay. File system images. That's a full meaning for FS images. And it's a kind of metadata snapshot, not actual data. Edit log, hold metadata, change, recent changes. Okay, this data has to be created as a FS image snapshot, then it will be released from here. Until it just create as a FS images, it just hold as an edit log information, that's it. So block report also already we discussed. So block report, send pulse, active pulse from data node to name node. High availability, and here only the standby name node will come to this. So in this certain time, right, 
from a name node down, second in name node will be taking the responsibility. In this middle time, name node will be keep on monitor and keep on live. Then it's we are using a one more name node is called a standby name node. If you are using a huge cluster places, there only standby name node required, otherwise it's not required. Standby name node main use is only for high availability. If anything has happened, immediately standby name node first to take the responsibility and take all the operations. Once secondary name node will be back started, then standby name node will be coordinated with the secondary name node and run in the back end. So it's only for huge cluster sizes. So Hadoop 1x, only one standby name node you can use. Hadoop 3x version you can use up to n number of. Okay, so standby name node also is a kind of secondary name node, but standby name node only used for high availability. SBNN. Secondary name node SNN, standby name node SBNN. Okay, so Zookeeper. Main play with Zookeeper, what it is trying to do? Whenever name node goes down, immediately name that information first will be reached into the Zookeeper. Because data node fails are down anything, immediately you can get that information to name node, right? All the pulse can be monitored by your name node and immediately take the decisions. But what if name node goes down? That will be monitored by your zookeeper based on some quorum PR. So quorum PR is nothing, Q, U, U, U or E, M, I think, quorum PR. So H quorum, I cannot remember the exact word. Quorum. So some zookeeper quorum is available. So here also some quorum pair, some clusters available. Keep on only monitor with the main mode. If anything goes down or failures happen, zookeeper only can confirm, then it will be informed to some associations is available. Uh, that name is called. Remember that. There is some associations that are only elected. Who is that second sorry, immediate uh, name node? If a standby name node and secondary name node is available, it's just going to be monitored and provided by your zookeeper only. Failover that controller. That's ZKFC. That will be taken care by this one. Zookeeper failover controller. ZKFC. That's okay. But uh, some other um, association is there. There only it just selected a new name now. I forget the name actually. Is it okay? I cannot remember. I will check and let you know that one. Okay, maybe next section we will be discussed. Okay, so journal node, active node, passive node. This is a part of your secondary name node only. The name will be different. Journal node is active node. Simple meaning. Replication by default three X replications will be monitored by SDFS two X version and one X version. Three X they are using another concept is called erasure encoding. That we will discuss next session. So the job is to service nothing but already running the job information right. Yeah, the job is completed. Success jobs, all the information, failure job, all the information keep on holding somewhere. That's called as a history server. It will be keep on maintaining all your information blog from that. Job information. With its state, whether it's a success, running, failed, killed all the status uh, jobs you can recall from you. If you want to check what was the reason it was failed. In the future, you want to refer something, job is to server will help you. Okay. Anything else? Any question? Next session, we will go with some erasure and coding concept in detail, as well as we will go with Hadoop comments. And we will touch with Linux basic commands as well. Clear? Yeah.
Yeah, actually, I lost uh, regarding the FSA image. Uh, will that refresh every one hour? Oh, FS images will not be refreshed every one hour. Checkpoint, right? Secondary name node will be read from name node. That is okay for every one hour. Uh, secondary node or read from the main node. Yeah, right. Okay. That's a checkpoint period. Okay. 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 Three thousand six hundred seconds divided by sixty. It will be reached into sixty minutes. I think so. So that it's a one hour. Okay. Any question? Any other question? Hope you have some idea about it, right? Yes. So next session, we may be going to discuss with how to commands practical. Oh, this one, Raju, replication is Raju. Encoding Hadoop commands and Linux commands. Practical. Okay, let's we plan to discuss. Uh, hello. Yeah. So, uh, will you teach uh, Bash script? Yeah, basic Linux commands, what all will be adopt with the Hadoop, right? We'll be going to compare both and we'll be discussed. Don't worry. Because what's happening okay. in Linux command, bash script, what's going to be discussed in Hadoop. The comparison purpose, we're we'll going to execute both commands. Okay, I will show you the both. Sure. Thank you. Any other so every, every class is consists of two hours, right? Every week. Yeah, every week, day, Saturday and Sunday, it should be a two hours. Two, two hours. to 8.30, yeah. So will these uh, text files shared? I mean, uh, where we can find these files? That? These text files, you just stored it, right? How to open deduction dot text. Where we can get this, these. this file will be stored in the material path. Those who are joining and continuing the session, right? They we will provide the material access. They will get from there all the information. OK, when we can get that? Uh, once you join the session, right? Then we will provide access to you. So here already there are some materials is available, previous batches, same like you're getting it. This recording is available? Or, all or all the informations. Here you can see each of the topics is separately designed. Okay. You can see separate recording. We will give you what all we are discussing, right? That all will be provided as a recording to you. Class notes, whatever we are discussing, right? All the class notes informations and that uh, Jupyter lab, whatever we are practicing, right? The command, everything has to be stored. And some commands we are practicing with some things, right? We just designed. So that my rough handwriting. That is also will give you yeah, as a reference. And, and, hmm. and how long will it go? Class? Sorry? How long it will go? How long? Uh, it's, duration? it's up to five months it will reach. Okay. Because we have a huge topic, each of them you have to go in practical, right? So it's not a fast track, it's a it's a equal, it's a not a slow track as well. Depends okay. on your people understanding and it will batch improvements. We will go with little speed up slow. Quality as well as that understanding is must. That's it. Each concept yeah. you must understand it. And it should be an interactive session. Always you can raise your question without any hesitations. Uh, any, should... in between any big days or something we can ask for any I mean, doubts or something we can ask in between. Oh, oh. big days already I am overloaded. So okay, okay. No, no, I just <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we yeah, have other work as well. So we cannot do that. <laughs> okay. So next session is a trial session is going to start. So you can interested with those all, you can reach me in private. We will discuss that. Any other question? No, sir. Okay. So here you can see the container is running in the back end. Almost 18 containers we have designed. Each of them will be synced together and provide the outcome to you. 
So each of them, like a data node separate, secondary and were separate. So node manager, Spark, Jupyter Master, everything we have designed as a separate container, that one is running, is a combined together. So this deployment and all, we will help you, don't worry. This environment as well. If you want to practice anything, you can practice and store it. We have terminal practice as well. Those who are always comfortable with the terminal, you can go. A kernel practice as well. You can create all your kernel practice here. Yeah, Okay, Spark session has to be start here. So based on the resource or something I just allocated, based on the just going to be start here as well. Okay, you can save and you can use as a report or reference of future because all the command with its output, you can get from here and you can use it. Before going for the interview, this is very easy and suitable for you. Okay. Yeah, Jupyter Lab and Headspace is not a part of very important nowadays. So that's the reason we just moved into Cassandra. Cassandra mostly used one. Headspace is not a dependent one nowadays. It's not trending as well. So that's the reason in our batch we just added Cassandra. So Cassandra is a separate Docker image. That's once you learn about the Docker com commands and all, then only you're going to practice it. That is the reason it won't involve involved here. Yeah, you can, you can. That's how I will give, guide you, don't worry. How to add this Cassandra cluster images into your other cluster. That all I will help you, don't worry. Somebody ask the questions in private chat window. So, can we work with Cassandra in Jupyter Lab? That's the question they ask. I cannot mention my, their name, but this is the question they have right. So if you have any trouble or you will not understand something, you may be, some keywords, uh, basic keywords also you may not be understand. Somebody will be understand. Somebody will not be understand. Don't hesitate. Reach into the private chat window. I will try to explain what it is. Even a small command as well. Because I had this in your batch, experienced pressure, everybody will be synced together. So don't hesitate. It's up to your knowledge. You want to learn some knowledge, that's it. So it's a question is a difficult or easy. It's not about it. What do you learn something? That's it. Yeah. Yes. Entire one month you can attend with the trial batch of thousand rupees. That's it. After one month, if you are interested, you can continue with us and pay the balance amount. If you are not interested, we can refund one hundred percent. Don't worry. I promise. So it's a kind of you need some confidence, right? We are trying to prove our stuff with you. You want to see some of the days. So within a one session or two session, you cannot see that. If you're really interested, you can join on one month private session. You entirely attend the classes and you maybe see how the session is going on. The reality, you can compare it. Then you can confidently reach us and that is the main motive. Then only we can uh, improve you as well. So you have to adopt with this with confidence. That's very, very important. That we will take. Any other question, guys? Okay, so that's it. Those who are on interest, just text me in private. This session also will be loaded into YouTube channel. You can refer this two session. After that, it won't store into our YouTube. It will be separate private folder. It's just design. There only all the commands, codes, everything has to be stored. Okay. So who are all interested, just text me in private. If no question, we can close no, it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you all. Thank you. Any question? Others?
Any question? Okay, I'll just stop the recording.